let me start with you, Shannon. Any update to that fundraising number? What do you think is behind the momentum you saw with your record-breaking event? Well, we were just following Jotega's lead. Um, we took the baton from her and decided to use our privilege and our platform and our power to do the same thing uh, that Jotega had done on her call. And I was so grateful to see women, white women, show up in mass. I think there's a lot of regret about the way that 2016 went, the way that 2020 went. And 2024 has to be different. It can be different. And last night was just a first step. This is not a new organization. It was just a call. Next step is to join a broader coalition. Win with uh, Women for Harris actually has a huge coalition call on Monday night that we will all be joining. And it's really about taking step after step after step and not staying on the sidelines, actually getting out there and doing the work to elect Kamala Harris in 100 days. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jateka, take us all, all the way back to Sunday and the Win With Black Women call. What drove it, and, and how does it feel to see this cascade of support from other coalitions? Well, Jonathan, it, it's just really exciting and electrifying to see the energy that's around the country for Vice President Kamala Harris. We couldn't be more than elated to see all of our allies that are stepping up, answering the call, doing what they need to do to organize their communities. And, and we're being inclusive and in community with each other. As Shannon said, there's a women's uh, organizing call with the, the Biden, uh, with, the, with the Harris campaign. Uh, happening on Monday night. And we're all talking about all of those calls that happen to get together in, in the next week or two to truly see how we can break the internet uh, and have hopefully millions of people joining us together, knowing that united that we win. And, and in this moment, I think that this country is seeing the power of unity but the power of mobilization at every single level. And it is on fire for Vice President Kamala Harris. And I know for the next 100 days, there are a lot of people who are going to be working and mobilizing. Yeah, Shannon, what did you advise, what did you advise liberal white women that they specifically need to do, as you put it, use their privilege to elect Kamala Harris? Yeah, I mean, Jotika gave me great advice when we spoke, and she said, look, the work that your community needs to do is much different. You know, white women are starting at a deficit. In every single election since 1950, except for two, the majority of white women have voted for the Republican candidate. And we all know what happened in 2016 and 2020, and, and there has to be, we have to flip the script. The good news is that white women aren't a monolith. We're divided among education and uh, religion and marital status. And so even the smallest shift in the way we vote can swing an entire election. So if we can get those white women who are feeling punished or ostracized or alienated by comments by Donald Trump or J.D. Vance about childless women or cat ladies or even taking away reproductive freedoms, including IVF. If we can get those women to vote the right way, we will win in a landslide. And so I think that's why these calls and these calls to action, right, that was just step one of, of so much work that needs to be done. That's why this is so important. And just like Joe Taka said, this is about coming together in a much larger coalition and doing the work together shoulder to shoulder and electing the first woman, the first black woman, the first AAPI woman, president of the United States in 100 days. Jateka, how can the enthusiasm be sustained through Election Day and translated into votes in key battleground states? Well, that's where the work starts. It, the, we're going to win this election at the local level. We're going to win it going door to door. We're going to win it having conversations at our dinner tables, having conversations in our places of worship, having con conversations in our places of fun, talking to our friends. It's going to take all of us together, as Shannon said, united, but focus and mobilizing. And it's very important to know that this fire and momentum is going to have an impact, I believe, up and down the ballot. I think we're going to see See a lot of action and movement, particularly for candidates that are running for local office across this country, the United States Senate. I believe everything is back in play because the country is on fire and everyone is committed to taking action. Everyone is committed to making sure we're registering voters, talking to voters, and most importantly, casting those ballots. 
Watch. Or take care, Edie. I'm going to see you tomorrow night. And Shannon, Shannon Watts, thank you both very much for coming to The Last Word.